All these animals. Lots of rabbits. Rabbits. Like, what's going on here? Another rabbit. There's a rabbit. There's a rabbit. Twenty. Ra there's a rabbit. Good thing we got some good outbound lighting. There's another rabbit. Another rabbit. Gee. Rabbits on rabbits. Road. Another rabbit. Couple rabbits. Hey guys, Matt from Outbound Lighting. It is a wet but beautiful night out here. I uh, just thought I'd kind of show you guys what the road edition is like on a road or a what we got is the greenway here out in St. Charles, Missouri. I got obviously the outbound lighting road edition, which this is the one that has the sharp cutoff, which maybe you guys can see it here, how we got just enough residual light up here and then a really intense beam and then it slowly fades out. So basically what that means, you can kind of see a cutoff line out here. So if you're a pedestrian and you're oncoming, you're gonna see a light, a car's gonna see a light, but it's not gonna be blinding you because you got this cutoff line. Now, I hope the camera can pick this up because once you get under that cutoff line, ooh, it's gonna hurt. So you get under there and that is, that's pretty bright. Now this is like what most bike lights when they're aimed up with the circular spot. This is just what people see all the time. And that's why people hate you if you've got these kind of lights and you're constantly just riding around like this. But if you got this nice cutoff beam pattern, you can see, I don't know if you can see on my shirt here, as you can see that this is actually letting you put light down on the ground where you want to see. Because you can see we're, you can easily see 50, 75 yards. And yet, you can be way out here, just go running out here, and it's not really going to bother you. Now, if you get under, yeah, it's going to suck. So maybe if you're a toddler, it's going to suck. But if you're a normal human being, about five feet tall, and you've got the road edition that you've aimed correctly, you're not really going to bother some people. Now, I've got another light. It's the uh, Seika 1800. Similar price point. I think there's like 325 but I know there's another great light that a lot of people like. It's a fantastic trail light. I'm not gonna say it's not, but for a road, well, let's see what happens here. So, it is a very bright light. They do a good job with fading it off and all this stuff, and they've got nice fill down here. But the problem is, in order to get the same throw that you got with the road light, you have to aim this Seika up pretty high. And because it's a conical spot, that's the amount of glare that you're getting for anybody who's coming right ahead on you. And that sucks. So most courteous riders end up trying to aim their lights down. So, man, that is pretty, pretty bright. So they end up aiming the lights down so that, all right, you're not gonna be a dick and you are gonna try and keep that light a little low it is still really bright. Here, let's turn on the uh, road edition and show you basically what you can get with the cutoff. So, I'm kind of aimed, kind of have to see how far down we've had to aim the Seika just so that it's not blinding people to the degree that it does with the road. So let's go out here so you can see. I hope you can see with the camera here. The Seika, even though it's aimed almost directly at the ground right now, still is glaring really intensely compared to the road. Now let's just turn that off. Kind of get a good comparison. We're right next to a highway too, if you guys can't tell. So, here you can even kind of make out the reflector. It's really not blinding you, but you're still able to see way down there. Now, Let's turn on the Seika again to the point where we had to aim it. Look at that. You can see how intense this hot spot is and how you cannot quite see as far out there. And yet, even as you're still coming, you're still glaring people quite a bit. So either you got to be covering up the light when people are coming or you aim it down or you put your hand over it. Either way, you got to be thinking about it, which is not always the best thing that you want to do when you're doing 35 miles an hour on a side road or things like that so that's kind of why I'm not gonna say the sake is not a great light it really is good for trail lights got a nice even hot spot really nice fall off but for a commuter light or a road light where you're dealing with traffic 
it is a lot of light to deal with as compared to with the road edition where we've got that strong cutoff line that lets you have the light aimed up really high and get that intense spot and yet you're not going to be that guy who has a 2000 lumen light spraying directly into somebody's eyes and it says a lot about you you know you're courteous you care for the environment you don't like to blind people unless of course they're toddlers and they're sitting about this high then well life's tough you gotta man up sometimes but the other light that i've got here is the bright eyes light this is literally the best rated light on amazon with 3600 reviews probably even more by the time this video has been up for like a year and people can't say enough good things about it and yeah as you can see it's a really narrow spot and in order to get that same distance that you could at the road you got to aim it up pretty good now let's go out there and just like at the seika it's extremely blinding to the point that you're pretty much always gonna have to aim this light down and low when you're actually using it so your actual output ends up being about 25 feet in front of you and nothing else now we've got a lot of residual light out here because we've got street lights you got until like nine o'clock at night here so there's still some light on here but let's just go for a ride now i have seen what must be at least 20 30 40 rabbits out here so i think this light's going to kind of show you how many rabbits you can catch with this light versus the seika in the position that's not blinding people and then the road light so you can see this narrow beam makes it pretty tough to kind of see what we're doing we have to aim this up really high and the second that we kind of move around you lose it so let's turn on the road edition here and that's turned off yeah completely off I mean, go climbing up here now this is already aimed so that it's not blinding people who would be coming this way i don't think many people are going to be walking around here at 9 30 at night so i don't think we have to worry too much about it but you can see we got a nice flood fill light down here it kind of covers up all the, there's a rabbit we got one and then you get that distance down here like i said we got a lot of residual light tonight so it's not quite the same and plus this mounting system is it's robust but you can quickly aim it up higher if you want to or just quickly put it back down it's not super tight but it's also not going to move around when you start moving around the bike so as you can see even as the trail twist and turn or if you're on a country road or a bike yep grab it you're still going to be able to see all the way around these corners which is a really great asset to have and so now if we turn on the seika which you remember that we aimed so that it's not blinding everybody you can see i do think it's a good light as far as having that nice hot even fill you can see around the corners but you're not going to get that distance until you've aimed this thing up and it's treating it like a spotlight so that's where even though it is a more expensive light and it is putting out i'd say 50 percent more lumens than what we use but in order to use it as a real road light as in something that's would pass the german laws and things like that as far as cutoffs you have to aim this thing down a lot which kind of negates the reason for having a really strong bike light for it. man i am so out of shape just trying to climb up this simple hill plus i'm forgetting to downshift i think <clears throat> there we go much easier now let's just do a nice slow climb here so we turn on road light again this actually shows off that cutoff really well so you can see against this wall what's going on here and on this uh stuff around here plus it's a little bit warmer color temperature 
So on camera, it's probably gonna seem like this is brighter, but this is also a warmer color temperature which a lot of people prefer. I'd say the Seiko is probably 5,500, 6,000 Kelvin. Uh, which again, that's some people's preferences. They like to run that kind of white light. We prefer more of a warmer color, easier on the eyes. It lets your eyes adjust to the darkness a lot quicker. And so, you can see it's just mostly the massive even width that we've got going on here that really just lets you feel way more comfortable riding on a trail like this. I don't know why it's having a trail. This is technically a greenway, but if you can't tell, I'm more of a mountain bike guy than I am a road guy. I stole my wife's bike, which is way too small for me. So, this is uh, again Matt from Outbound Lighting. I did all the design and engineering of this light here in St. Charles, Missouri, just outside of St. Louis. You can get your light now at uh, outboundlighting.com. And just search for the uh, Road Edition bike light. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go and uh, head on back and get back to bed. It's been a late night. So, thanks for riding with me. I'll see you later.